All right, welcome back to another episode of Event Hub's Talking Block. I am John Catalyst Gray, and joining me is John Velociraptor Guerrero. What's up, team? It's been a minute. We, it has uh, been a minute. We've been doing our own things for a little bit. People wondering if we uh, broke off or no friends anymore. And uh, yeah. no, we're still, we're still cool. We're still doing we're still awesome. Talking Block. Yeah. But we're also exploring new ventures, and that has been a lot of fun. But today, yeah. we got Are we going to be friends after the tier list? Probably That's not. the question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we usually aren't. We usually have to cool down for a while after we're, we're done with this one when the opinions really come up. But uh, that's pretty normal in the FGC. That's how the FGC works, right? So It wouldn't yeah. be a fighting game tier list podcast if we didn't have some <laughs> fights, right? And that's what yep. we're doing today. We're talking about Season 1, the final Season 1 for Street Fighter VI tier list. Got 21 characters at this point, and we've ranked all of them. Some of them we're going to have more to say about others, but this should be pretty interesting because the game has had one significant balance update. That was when Ed came out in the end of February. We're expecting a lot more, so things are going to get shaken up, but this is kind of the last snapshot we're suspecting of where this game is going to be on in its inaugural run. And it's a great vanilla game, but there definitely mm -hmm. needs to be some changes. I'm sure we'll get to at least a handful of those as we discuss, but that's about all I had for an intro. I'm ready to dig into it. Did you have anything before we get started here? Uh, hopefully everyone still likes us after we get through this tier list so <laughs> please leave a, a like on the video and a comment below like get the guys. discussion yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay right. so we're gonna go through this and i've just kind of put the characters in any old order here we're starting off with luke because i think luke is one of the most not i don't want to say contentious i think most people agree that he belongs at the very tippy top of this tier list uh, I assume you said the same thing, although there have been a handful of people that haven't said that. But what do you think, John? Where's Luke? I've got Luke at number one for okay, a lot of reasons. Good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Rifle off some of those reasons. Lightning round. All right. So first, he's the most popular character at Capcom Cup, which was the largest esports tournament ever in terms of prize money for the fighting game community. Uh, Nakayama was sitting there watching it, you know, with us, uh, right behind us and stuff. And my goodness, this guy's damage is out of hand. Uh, there's a big issue where this character can deal out more damage than most of the other cast members without having to consume as many resources as other people. And, and resource management is huge in this game. And Luke is just getting way too much for way too little. Yeah. The way I put it is that he might not be the absolute best when it comes to damage output, corner carry, uh, conversions, footsies, jump-ins, uh, what else am I thinking, drive rush, but he is one of the best at all of those and that all adds up to him, I think, being significantly better than others. There is some contention for whether or not he's number one in the game and I will say that like you were getting at, the representation and the realized potential that we've seen from Luke is absolutely undeniable. No character is seeing the heights that Luke has actually reached. Now, it might be that other characters have more potential and maybe we see that in them, although it, I don't know how much it matters at this point, especially with everybody changing soon, potentially. It might be that if you were to somehow put it all under the microscope and quantify it, then another character is technically better. But man, when you face off against a good Luke, it feels like you can hardly play this game. And it's not that you can't beat a Luke, it's not that Lukes are just gonna win, but the amount of, as we like to say on this, prod on this podcast, privilege that Luke has, the way that he has such high marks in every category, and maybe more importantly than that, that every category flows into the next one. He's got that conversion into the high damage, into the corner carry, into the corner mix-ups, and a lot of characters do have that, but no one has it in as high marks as Luke. So in his own tier by himself, number one in the game, I have Luke. Yeah, I, I, I do think that the second place character is very close to Luke that I have here. Um, I don't think he's so far head and shoulders above the pack. Um, I think he is a number one character, um, as you said, uh, but like Aki, for example, actually has a decent fight against Luke uh, because she can do her slither around his fireballs and really blow him up for that. Like she's one of the few characters who can blow up his fireballs really well. Um, so I do think he has some matchups where they're not just unbelievably in his favor. Uh, I don't know if he has a single losing matchup in this game. Um, and again, you know, he's got second place at Capcom Cup. This guy is super well represented at pretty much every level of play. Uh, yeah, just too good. Well, I wanted to go into at least the previously most hotly debated and frustrating characters. And so I have next on our discussion list, Ken, but I don't have Ken at number two. Uh, I have Ken oh, at boy. number, you ready for this? Number four. Oh, and I God. was tempted to drop him even lower than that. Now, look, there's there's two different Johns coming at this. And I think we all 
are doing this to an extent. <laughs> two different Johns, I guess maybe three, maybe four. Uh, but I mean, two different me's coming at this in that Ken has been a top three character. I don't care about how much people have been talking about how oh, he's a little outside the top five or maybe he's fifth. He's been one of the top three characters. With the way this game is shaken up in recent times and Okay, so that's part of me. The other part of me goes, look, with Tokido and Phenom and so many of the top Japanese and European players putting Ken so low, I gotta go, maybe I don't see it, but there is something to be said there. And that's why he's a little bit lower, but I still have him at fourth because he has most of those things that I just listed off with Luke, but maybe his damage isn't quite as high. And he's got some sort of gimmicky, goofy things that were stronger early on, but because he's so prevalent, we put him under the microscope and we figure him out. Like Jinrai kicks are a pain in the ass, but people are starting to have some answers for it. It's not like you have a coverall answer for it, um, but you're starting to have some. People are having answers for when he does Dragon Lash, not only stuffing him, but in the situation afterwards, he's plus one you start to know more and more about what you can do in that situation as the defender and your options open up a little bit. I don't think that he's not a top tier character. I think that he still gets downplayed a bit by a lot of the Ken army, but I have him at fourth overall. Where do you have Ken, John? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go right at you and just say that's some crap. Uh, you, bought, you bought into the propaganda. Uh, this is this is literally one of the best characters in the game. And there's a case that he is better than Luke. Um, his corner carry is far too good in this game. And the corner is where you do not want to be at in Street Fighter 6. This guy can talk to you into the corner so easily and push you all the way there. Um, I get really salty about people uh, downplaying this character. Um, and this is a, the very simple fact. This was the second most popular character at Capcom Cup just a, a few months ago. Hands down, like the, and he was right behind Luke. He was one person behind Luke. And we saw a bunch of mirrors. Phenom goes on Twitter or goes wherever and says, ah, oh, this character is, you know, not all that great, and then gets eliminated in a mirror match by safe um, at Capcom Cup. And it's like, you, it's like, what is wrong with you? And this is why we love Tokido so much on Event Hubs, is he always says, like, I play one of the best characters in the game. Like, I'm never not going to play one of the best characters. He plays Kim. So, I mean, right then, right there, you cannot downplay this character. And well, it, this he is- he puts Ken, uh, he didn't say where Ken was when he did his most recent interview with Broski, but he said Cammy and Chun-Li, and he said, admittedly, Cammy gives his character Ken a hard time. And then Luke third, uh, potentially fourth, but I think when he offered his thoughts, and it, yeah, it's Tokido, that, that, that voice comes with some authority. He's putting Ken out in like fifth or sixth place. Well, he didn't order that list. He just put Ken in, in the top five. That, that list was unordered. And and so, but again, he does not play weak characters. Uh, uh, Tokido never does. He he plays the characters he thinks are the best characters in the game. And, and this is why, this is this is the stuff I get very salty about in the community because people get very protective over their careers in the community. And they're like, well, my character needs to be great and everyone else's character needs to be whatever kind of thing. And it's just, it's such bull crap. We, uh, this is what we, we do here at Event Hubs. We like to look at the whole community and, and think about character variety being so important to these games because that helps DLC sales, it helps viewership, it helps everything. And You've got a character like Ken who dominates and, and is just so good and you've got all these pro players going out there it's like ah you know he's like fifth or sixth or seventh or something like that it's just like that is such horse crap and, and again that, it's why I've got him at second this is one it's hands down one of the best characters in the game and going and th looking through the stats this is one of the hands down best characters like statistically speaking he is just so so strong yeah and I think he's easier to be good with than yes mm, most every other character that's in contention here in the top five uh, yeah, in the top 10 as I look at it, at least as mine is played out here. Yeah, uh, and, and a lot of these characters could be moved around, honestly. I've moved these around a handful of times. Uh, I have two characters besides Luke ahead of Ken, and my argument for them would one, because I see the potential, and two, because enough people have, have, have seen the potential in them that it, it's more of like, yeah, I, I'm buying into a little bit of the community. I don't think it's propaganda. I'm thinking of it's the it communal is propaganda. wisdom. Well, no, it is. Opinion. It is. That's it is. Fine. These players. No, no, no. These players. This is a big problem. They're, these players' job is to win. They want to win, and they, they're they're dedicated to winning. And so they do not care about being fair and honest about their characters. Most do not. There are some who do. Uh, Tokido is why we shout him out. But most of these other players who play this character, they are full of crap in terms of their opinion about him, and put out that stuff just to, to save their own faces. So, I will say. I, I'm, I'm going to call that out directly. The point of view, me, or the me point of view that's saying that in my realized potential, yeah, you see Ken so much more often. 
but at the other side of things, like the potential that I, I do believe that not all of that is just top players trying to downplay their character. I don't think that that's all of it. I'm sure that's a percentage of it. And that's why I don't have him outside of the top five. They were right. saying he was outside of the top five before the uh, the changes that happened more recently. And it's like, nah, no way, man. Um, yeah. and, and, and he and barely so got touched. The, yeah, in the, yeah in the he really did. They, his, he, he his, barely did. His throw loop is still a throw loop. It, yep. It's just that he's not as close now, so he has to time it manually. But that even comes with some benefits in and of itself because he's like perfectly spaced for some uh, some. Yeah, you, you at, you're saying you actually have to time stuff for Ken now. How how how? Right. What, well, what, for Ken what, what players, that's a really big deal, John. And I don't I think you're being too sensitive to the kind of people that play Ken. <laughs> all right uh, so i've got him at fourth but again like my my like top seven or eight is pretty interchangeable at this point but that's where i have him right now and i, and I stand on that and mm -hmm. the, let's see where i got oh well did you have more on ken because we're gonna go up to another i just want to say again that that character. this character ken was one point behind luke in terms of most represented at capcom cup the biggest esports tournament i ever. think he's like, he's easy he, to he, be good is, with yeah but i also okay. think that a lot of it comes down to he was easy to be good with early on and then people put a lot of his stuff under the microscope but the community understandably so but it's it's a bad look the community has a really hard time updating opinions after their first impressions there's a saying first impressions are lasting fair enough but when the games legitimately change and when the tech continues to, to roll out, you have to be able to update your opinion. Uh, as a JP player, uh, I've been promoting that a lot because I think first emotional impressions have been very red hot. Uh, and I think that applies to an extent with Ken. But that's why I have And they, they updated opinions on him and yet he still was the second most represented character. Uh, and it's like, yeah, uh, people yeah, got Capcom better Cup. against him, but he, he, he was still dominant, incredibly dominant. Yeah. So number three here, not number three over on the list, but number three that we're going to talk about here is the other of the big three, at least previously, JP. John, tell me about JP. So here's the thing. Um, I played this guy and had a 77% uh, win rate with him. And then I peaked, I think, at 1800 MR. Um, I was pretty damn good with him and I felt guilty about playing the character. Uh, then he got hit pretty hard by this patch and he's definitely worse. Um, I've got him at fifth overall right now. Um, and he's... He, Here's the thing is that I, I think that his the damage on his cane strikes right now is, is too good because he his for his light one It does the same damage as most characters heavy attacks And it's like I look at this character and I go why does he need that? Why did Capcom of all things say here? Here's your light attack That's gonna do as much damage as a heavy and, and so I think he needs one more nerf on the uh, the damage on his uh, cane attacks Beyond that. I think he's actually in a really good spot. I think he ends up in a pretty good place overall uh, Where do you have JP at? Tenth and it's not even close Ah, here we go, guys. All right, so two things. One, emotional reactions were a lot hotter when he first started because he doesn't play traditional Street Fighter. You feel like, what are you supposed to do against all this? Well, the answer was there were absolutely pockets. There were places where he doesn't just get to throw offense at you. And indeed, his zoning is much more risky than it looks like. But you have to have experience and you have to have those faithful drive rushes and jumps forward to realize that, oh, he's got more recovery when he does most all of his zoning techniques than he uh, looks like or than you would think. And compared to most all of the other characters that are throwing fireballs, fireballs tend to be faster in this game because of the parry mechanic. That's a global thing for everybody. But with JP's case, they have different functions. They're not as fast. He's more susceptible. Okay, so there's that. But he was an amazing uh, projectile thrower zoning character. Fair enough. In this most recent patch, they nailed Amnesia. Fine, fair enough. It doesn't build uh, doesn't build back the meter anymore while he's doing the combos. It immediately scales, was it, to 60%. It makes sure that you don't get any extra damage off of a level 3. It makes sure that that scaling kicks, on, uh, kicks in right when you do a level 3 so that you, uh, so it does minimal damage there. And uh, what else? Uh, was there any more to Amnesia? I think that it, it got murdered pretty hard. Um, really now, hard. Nope. his, his anti-air, and by the way, uh, crouching anti-airs do have a, a lot of them in this game. Uh, normal anti-airs do have invincibility to airborne attacks. That's not a thing that only he had, but they took that away from his crouching fears. Now, especially against, get this, Luke, uh, when characters with downward hitting uh, jump in attacks, he trades almost all the time, unless you're super early, but he is a zoning character that has a terrible anti-air. 
He has uh, nerfed standing heavy punch, so his footsies department got nerfed. And now his burnout game, which was one of his most oppressive features, is nerfed too, because now when you absorb uh, his, his snaps and his spikes and such, when you're out in the neutral and you're trying to get in, you absorb as much meter as the uh, parry takes to do. So he's not getting to burn you out. This guy has been hit on just about every front, defense, offense, neutral. And here's the thing. He's a zoning character that has a hard time keeping you out, which means he now has to either rely on a very risky zoning game or I completely I got interrupted. Uh, this he's guy does not, not struggle very good to keep at footsies. Out. This, you don't this guy, know. This guy I, you I, haven't I, I, played I, him since everybody was complaining about him and no one knew how to fight him. But it was one thing to have an 1800 JP back in month one of the game. It's a completely different thing to say that kind of a thing now month three but yeah it's it's i don't i don't agree at all that this guy struggles to keep a blowout it's one of his best traits um being able to do his ex spike um and other stuff to to pound people back and knock them back and keep them full screen he's one of the he is the best full screen zoner in this game over guile um in my opinion he is a dominant character when he can push people all the way out and if they get low on resources and stuff so i i completely disagree there well so i, so, I yeah go ahead go, you, go. you haven't said much no, no, about jp ahead, yet well, he's got some pretty terrible matchups against uh, both, both high and low tiers because uh, characters like Kimberly, who are, she's not very highly ranked uh, on most people's list, mine included, but she has a throw it at the wall, see if it sticks to get in on you, where she's going to rush up or she's going to uh, jump in or she's going to cut a jump in short or she's going to do one of her um, uh, teleports. And for JP, try to be ready for all of that in a game with also, by the way, drive rush at any point in time. It's like, yeah, you might, they're, they're gimmicky, but if you don't stop it, then she's in and you don't have the walk speed. And here's the thing. It's like everything they took away from JP plus the fact that he doesn't have walk speed to position himself means that not only can he not play the zoning game very well, he can't play the footsies game. He can't play the repositioning game very well. And people have downloaded this character. They know when they can drive rush forward. They know when he has to take a risk and they know how to uh, balance the risks and in their favor. So he's just getting eaten up left and right. And you're seeing the JP army, the so-called JP army leaving. Nemo is like the number one Blanca or was recently. Kakaru has been playing a lot of Ryu. I don't know if Kakaru is not playing JP as a main anymore, but you know, you see him exploring these other avenues in, in great detail, getting up to, uh, I think it was a second or first place Ryu overall online. And by the way, when's the last time JP won something? Even before all of these nerfs, JP wasn't getting, he was he was appearing in top 16s. Sure, there was a couple of them in, uh, quite a few of them in the Capcom LCQ. None of them won, by the way. Kakaru did not qualify for Capcom Cup, let alone even win it. He, he won early on when people didn't understand the character. They downloaded him, they nerfed him. He's 10th at best. So, JP won the second highest esports uh, pot yeah, in the fighting game. Way community. early on in the. In it doesn't the, matter. He still won it. And, and it's yeah. not like this character. N name, name the last time Aki won something. She's and, not and as good as JP. Yeah, exactly. And that's my point is that these characters should be normalized to the rest of the cast. And comparing JP to Luke and Ken is a really bad idea because Luke and Ken, we both just talked about them, both of those characters needing nerfs. And, and comparing them to the best characters in the game um, who are better than him is not a good idea. You want to compare them to the whole rest of the cast. I'm but I do agree with you. Only to Luke and Ken. But I do I agree with up you Kimberly, that. Kimberly, for example, and, and he's had a hard time against Dalsim and Rashid and then plenty of other characters. I do agree with Damn you me. that the rushdown characters do give him trouble. Um, that I, I, I do think that the, the rushdown characters like DJ, um, as you mentioned, Kimberly, Cam, and characters like that definitely are, are disadvantaged matchups. However, he does have matchups against some other characters that are very, very heavily in his favor. And I want to ask you, John, do you mm -hmm. still believe that 7-3 matchups do not exist in this game? No, no 7-3 matchups in this game. At all. Uh, no, none the, at all. Well, okay, hang on, hang on. Let me think about that. Because especially seeing uh, a player as strong as Idom with Manon or a player as strong as Hibiki with Lily, Lily yeah. having such a hard time getting 5-0'd a lot in some of these invitationals and that was recently. That speaks to a discrepancy between character ability. So maybe, but I lean towards no because I think that okay. even the worst characters in this game can dole out significant damage. Some can absolutely do it harder than others and that is a, a notable advantage. but. They can deal out significant damage, and they have abilities that that like like Lily is low tier, but she's got one of the best neutral uh, maneuvers in the app in the game, maybe the best. 
And when she implements that, it's scary. And especially for a character that's trying to keep you out in that particular example, it's scary. So people can get the job done. I am not comfortable against Zangief at any time. It's like, yeah, there's the, he's got to get through some stuff. But once he's in, the amount of, of, of anxiety where that switches over and now the pressure, oh, that's real. And he stalks a single level two super. And now it's I have to hesitate on every fireball or every zoning maneuver I throw. Uh, that yeah. all adds up to I don't think it's a 7-3 matchup. Yeah, and that to me speaks very heavily to privilege on your end. Uh, I play a low tier character, and I, I very much feel when there's a 7-3 matchup in this game. And if you look at Guile versus JP, and you look at the stats for that, official stats for March, you can see that it is one of the hands down worst matchups in the game, joining Honda versus Dalsim, and then Geef versus Sim. Uh, if you, you speak to any Honda or Geef player, how bad the Sim matchup is, they go, oh. And, and if you say something like that, the 7-3s don't exist, I think you're going to get an earful from those type of players. And again, that, that very heavily speaks to me to, to a lot of privilege on your end that you're not seeing what it's like for very low tier characters because you've only played JP in the game since it launched. When you when you play someone like Aki, when you play someone like Lily, the whole game, someone uh, articulated this to hard mode. You're activating hard mode in Street Fighter 6. I feel this. You're like, hey, you know, I lost my midair invincibility on my crouching heavy punch and stuff. And it's like, ah, guess what? My, mine trades much more often uh, than JP's does as Aki when I have to anti air someone. And I have to use four different anti air options to anti air people. Five, actually. Um, well, where I'm not you can saying that he He's as bad as those characters. I'm saying that he's top 10, but he's 10th. Uh, what, uh, what I'm saying, though, is that, that you're not experiencing the game like other low tier I mean, I got are. Lily all the way to master for the sake of being able to say I played a low tier character all the way to master so that you couldn't volley something like that at me. So take that. I mean, th but what I'm saying is you're missing part of the game that a bunch of other players are experiencing. Uh, just because you've only played JP, you, you've had the very heavy privilege of playing a top tier character initially, and now the characters drop down a bit. I do agree with you, but there's this whole other part of the game that these, you know, you get to, you know, halfway through our tier list here, and the experiences are a night and day difference. And that's how come I think that that saying that, that the 7-3 matchups don't exist in this game is a travesty. It, it's You're really missing a big part of the game when you, you don't experience it from that end. And again, going back to character variety here, we, if, if you release a character and no one plays that character because they're terrible and they're poorly designed and stuff like that, that's a failure on Capcom's end. Um, that is not what you want for these games. You want variety. You want when a character comes in to have them be a big bang, a, an experience there. That's an important part of these games to get variety and get stuff going. And so that's that's where I go with that. It's just it's I, I think that there's a part of the puzzle you're missing and a lot of other players as well if they only play top tier characters. If you play a lower tier character or a mid tier character, I think you understand this stuff pretty fundamentally. I play a mid tier character, and I got to tell well, you, in your opinion. I, I yeah. yeah, no, no. You you did say JP was mid tier when he was top tier. You you did have that before. You said that this was a mid tier character and other stuff. I and, said he was fourth. You you had him at mid tier when he first came out. Uh, we, we did a tier list and stuff about it. Um, but yeah, yeah it's it's and that was when the game first came out. You also said Manon was the best character in the game when it first came out. I'm won. not going to hold we that won, against yeah. you. Um, so, so I, I do think that with everything that I just listed about JP, uh, yeah, with the experience and the fact that some of the very low tier characters give him a hard time, uh, that all adds up to him and I can list nine characters that I feel are easily better. I actually showed this list to a friend and he's like, you got to put Ryu above JP, dude. I, I don't think, uh, Ryu is below him anymore. And I, and I, spoilers, I didn't do that, but uh, yeah, he's he's definitely fallen off and I think a lot of people maybe like John have had that emotional reaction to it and felt like oh man This character look at the way Kakaru exploded onto the scene at Red Bull Kumite uh, Won the LCQ and got all the way to second and then got top 8 at Evo and is red hot And I'm so frustrated by getting spiked and beat with JP online and and we're stuck in that time And, and it's like some people are going yeah his nerfs did happen. Maybe that knocked him down one or two but no, dude, he's, he's around 10. And, and I dare say this, we gotta get, I wish we had Dream King on here, but I bet you Dream King would even agree with me, at least worse than fifth place overall, because man, and, and G, G, uh, Dream King hated this character, I think even more than you did, oh, yeah. and, and emotionally too. And I think even he's at this place. So we'll see, we'll see. But I just, look, I don't think we're gonna be seeing JP's win. You'll see him pop up here and there, maybe even in a top eight, but he is not the character that everyone thought he was, and he certainly is not that character anymore. I say 10. Where did you have him? Fifth? I had him at fifth. Um, and, and again, it, it's we'll see what happens because when everyone gets nerfed around him, which is more than likely what's going to happen, uh, JP is going to be right there again. Do you think he's going to get nerfed farther in this next match? I, he definitely, need, again, here's the thing, John, is is his, his cane swing 
the light version of it does the same amount of damage as why most characters' that, heavy attacks. That, that's why why is that a into, thing? Why does he like need that? That's like a vacuum kind of statement, though, because like one of his specials does as much, but like, what's the use of that special? Can he just use it in neutral, or is it always a combo kind of a situation? And how does that factor in? There's a million ways you could come and analyze that, but just saying it arbitrarily of like he's got a, a special move that does more damage than the average heavy punch. It's like that comparison is is like moot to me i can't sink my teeth into it and in, into any meaningful way until you attach it to something that's a little more anchored um so so you play the character you know he can do his jabs into to light cane swing yeah. and for most characters like if you compare that to like aki's damage on her specials um aki's doing significantly less and and my question goes back again why does jp need his light special to do as much damage as a heavy when traditionally in this game when, when almost across the board hold on almost across the board that that the other characters do not have that same level of privilege and damage on their specials i don't think people are really complaining about jp's damage output right now uh compared to most of the rest of the cast i don't by the way this will be something that i'm sure comes up i don't think anybody on this cast needs a damage buff i think damage needs to be reduced and then it needs to be sort of applied appropriately so marissa should still be doing relatively more damage than everyone else but I think that the damage output generally in this game is a little bit too high. I just want to say that to, to kind of a blanket statement across this cast. But uh, so as, as far as, as JP, it's like he's not doling out, especially after the amnesia nerf, he's not doling out ridiculous amounts of damage compared to the likes of Luke and DJ and Marissa and uh, a lot of these other characters. Uh, he's doing like whatever damage and, and maybe a little bit high but it's it's not oh my gosh look at that what everyone was saying that to the amnesia situation and that's not a thing anymore by far that's not a thing anymore so i don't think he's got too much damage in anywhere and and his combos are not as long as not as drawn out as some other characters so he functions differently it's like he wants to get a couple of little hits and then knock you mid-screen he's not taking the damage he's taking the zoning potential from there so it's like maybe a little bit more damage on a jab 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 spin combo is appropriate compared to what you're talking about where aki's combos go forever because she does drive rush and uh, she has to jump through a hoop and we'll talk about her in a second here but her combos go on forever and ever especially when you're in a corner i think it's apples to oranges at a certain point and also, she's significantly lower on the tier list. So yeah, there's that. So my question, I'll go back to this again, John. Why why should JP have the same uh, damage as a, a, a heavy on his Because light? he doesn't do as long of combos and his uh, it works for his game plan where it's not overpowered. He's not he's not killing you faster than most other characters. He doesn't he has to get more touches than a lot of characters and his combo is mm. something like jab 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 spin. Uh, versus, you know, the, the kind of sequences where it's like jab, jab into uh, a drive rush into a medium into another drive rush into a corners carry into a situation like he's not doing those kinds of things. He's functioning differently. So the amount of damage that comes off of a special might be different than the amount of damage that comes off of another character's normal. And that doesn't there's an entire equation that has to be accounted for there. Those things don't exist in a vacuum. So it works for his game plan. It's appropriate for his game plan because he's not doing as long of combos and he's not doling out as much damage in those in that kind of situation with that particular combo as others I would. disagree I completely disagree but that's fine uh, we should move along all right next up on the list Chun Li where do you have Chun Li I've got Chun Li at seventh um uh this is uh I, I actually played her in the beta uh, and I probably never should have dropped her especially not for Aki <laughs> I probably should have stuck with this character uh, I think she's pretty good so I feel like this is the character that uh, I had a lot of faith in early on. I played a person that uh, got a lot of practice in and was very good with her at the beginning of the game's life. And you could see she's got a lot of what she needs. I have her at second, by the way, but hear me out. Okay. I've seen the potential. I didn't see the potential realized, save for maybe Haitani at Evo. And Haitani's not really a competitive player anymore. He spends his time streaming. But I see her walk speed paired with her reach, paired with her conversions. She doesn't do as much damage as the likes of Luke. She, mm, that the, the, the spinning bird kick takes you to the corner pretty well, but I don't think her corner carry is quite as good. And she's got that technical factor. Chun-Li is absolutely more of a potential character than a realized character. But with a lot of these players, I gotta assume players like Tokido have been playing against players like Haitani. Uh, and, and likes of uh, 
I'm spacing the night. Is it Moke was playing or two? Moke is like one of the is top chunks. Couple. Yeah. And and when I saw Lashar playing at Capcom mm -hmm. Cup, hot ah, damn, you're starting to see this realization. And again, a little more technical. Uh, I, I wouldn't, if it were just me in a vacuum, I would have her a little bit lower. But because of those things, and because I like I, part of me goes, I saw the potential, I didn't believe it, but others believe it. So, okay, it's not too hard for me to believe right now. I'll entertain her being at second. Again, this is not a super hard fast. This is where I come down right now. Fair enough, this is my tier list. But I have her at second overall because I think she's a well-rounded character that people are figuring out how to use. And while it's not as easy to do as the likes of Ken or Luke, I think her ceiling might be a little higher than the likes of Ken, for instance, not of, not, not of Luke. But that's how hmm. I see Chun. Yeah, I, the stats don't back that up in my mind. I mean, again, uh, Ken was just so much more represented than Chun-Li was there. Um, so I, I can't get behind that. And again, Chun-Li is really only dominated in Japan, uh, not over here in the States or not really in Europe or any other regions. Um, she's definitely represented. I'm not saying she's not, but like the, the amount of Chun-Li players in other regions besides Japan is not very high, uh, where if you go and look at most of the other top tier characters, they're heavily represented. Um, and so that's welcome. I've, I've got Chun-Li a little bit lower. Um, I know in Japan, like, like she's generally considered like a top three to top five character by a lot of mm -hmm. players over there um and you know definitely respect that it definitely could be the case but if if that's the case if this character is that good she should have higher representation in other regions besides that area I think um, that's a, the main reason with and that might be that depending on how you approach this that can be a reason why she's not as high again i'm saying i, I don't like disagree potential yeah. here yeah. yeah 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 no no her technicality is pretty good it is definitely up there um however uh these, these players job is to win and and if they feel chun is that strong like i think more people are going to be playing her and, and her representation is just i mean again this is one of the most popular characters in all of video games not even just street fighter but all video games and and we still don't see her uh, as as a dominant force like we do someone like a luke um, so I, I can't get behind her being second, but I can get behind her being somewhere, you know, somewhere in that, that top more Maybe region. she's a top, top 10. I, I got her seventh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, how about DJ? Where do you have DJ? I've got DJ at third. Oh, see, so do I. We agree on something again. <laughs> yeah. I've had DJ way up there for a long time. And for a while, he wasn't really realizing. He wasn't really winning tournaments. But, you know, he had a lot of rep at Capcom Cup. Um, you see the likes of Shen and Fudo, uh, but I see uh, even even you know steps down from there in like you know just like Kizzy K playing him. I got some DJs playing mm -hmm. in my local community here, and you can feel the threat of DJ on all of those different levels. It's pretty consistent. Now uh, and he's he's won he's won plenty. Uh, for some reason that hasn't made as much of a splash, but fair enough. He's got probably the best drive rush in a game where drive rush is so much of the equation not only that he's very effective at cutting that drive rush short so therefore making it in and of itself a mix-up along with all of the other ways he could potentially approach he's got the sways which are built in shimmies very good for that it builds right into that as well um, his damage is some of the highest in the game DJ has what it takes to win. Maybe not quite as much as the likes of Luke, but man, there's, I just, he's so far up there. And he's got great projectiles, sometimes a little committal. Sure, there's a little bit mm -hmm. of a drawback, but the things you can do with DJ, phew. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a some stubby normal type of stuff going on where you've got to be at very specific ranges. Um, but considering what his damage is when he's able to, to hit that, like his damage, even talking to some DJ players, they're like, yeah, it feels a little that feels a little out of line with the rest of the cast. Um, and I think that's going to be one of the main things that Capcom targets, along with potentially an overall universal uh, nerf to drive rush, which I've been talking about since the beta um, that I think is going to be coming in, that they're probably going to add an extra five or 10 percent damage scaling onto uh, drive rush. And that is specifically with the drive rush character like DJ is going to knock him down quite a bit. Um, so if they do damage nerfs in that on top of it, I think he's going to fall down quite a ways um, and, you know, uh, probably be a little more in line with the rest of the cast. But right now, uh, his character is extremely good. Extremely Do you think good. they're going to hit him? Or do you think he's going to fly under the radar and be the absolute best character next season? Um, if that happens, it's going to be the first time that's ever happened with DJ. So I'm definitely siding on the uh, Capcom's going to nerf him down again because uh, they no, can't have DJ Cam. be good. That's going to happen <laughs> yeah. to Cam. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, 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 I think he's going to get hit. So, yeah, I hope so. Not too hard, not too hard, mm -hmm. but a little something. Okay. Next on our list, we're talking, we're talking about Blanca. John, where do you have mm. Blanca? 
I've got Blanca fairly far down uh, because I don't think that anyone besides like a, a Meta RD and like Nishikan and a few others are really doing anything significant with them. And, and again, when most people talk about Blanca being strong in this, they are literally pointing at Meta RD, who plays Luke, you know, 50% of the time, and he plays, you know, uh, uh, Blanca the other time. We, we, we've already talked about Luke quite a bit, um, but mm -hmm. I've got Blanca at 11th, um, right right outside the top 10, because uh, I, I think that, that his shenanigans and some of the stuff he does is a little bit it's going to get downloaded here a bit with some time. Uh, we saw that with Punk versus Ben RD, uh, that he went into one of the initial matchups against uh, Blanca and did not really know what to do uh, because not a lot of people play this character. He's reasonably rare for, for a character who people think is as good as he is. Um, so anyway, I, I think that Blanca is going to fall off here a little bit naturally, and then I could see them actually altering something like his um, Air Beast roll, uh, not being plus eight on block, um, because it, that's, a, that's a little bit of a too good of a maneuver to have for a character who also has an EX reversal. So, yeah. I had him as high as, I think, 6th or 7th, but he wound up at ninth. He's definitely one of the top 10s, and I think that there was some debate about that because Street Fighter, well, <laughs> what were we saying? The top 5 is about 10 characters long. There's that right under the absolute best characters is a huge swath of characters that might be interchangeable and they're very hard to organize. Blanca is solidly in that for me now. And again, like from two to, to nine or so, I, a lot of these characters could get moved around. Um, it was more of, as I researched the characters that were around him, I said, ah, maybe they're a little bit better. But Blanca has more juice than ever, save for Street Fighter Four Online Blanca, because that was its own beast, no pun intended. Uh, Blanca plus lag is a whole other thing. But yeah. this Blanca, has the gimmicks, right? You can start with Blanca by just playing the I'm gonna beast roll and you're either gonna have to recognize and react to heavy, light, or EX from full screen and we'll just start there. And, and Blanca can probably get to about master just really going in on that gimmicky approach. But this Blanca is also solid. This Blanca has maybe the best anti-air in the game, but when you factor in the kind of conversions he can get off of his standing heavy kick, that backflip, uh, it's really good. This Blanca hmm. has a very significant footsie tool, and I think it's his crouching medium punch to get the party started. Really when good. he's also pairing that with the fact that he can hop, he can slide, he can roll, uh, and, and his movement options are wonky, that makes his neutral a little bit scarier. And he has that constant threat that you're just naturally um, playing, you know, the juggling game of, of mental stack in this game plus extra because of his beast rolls and then he's also doing all this crazy weird stuff in the in the solid neutral this character overloads you very quickly but then he's also got i think the second best level two in the game he ported over a v trigger from street fighter 5. holy crap you brought a v trigger over from street fighter 5. you guys remember that you guys have the pst from that still going on because blanca brought some over uh, to enjoy his mix-ups in the corner and his damage output there are pretty bananas and he's still got the what is it the weird oh no and didn't they get rid of the jump back uh, then ball immediately on wake up kind of goofy shenanigan stuff that's his air beast roll yeah it's still there yeah, for sure yeah. it's uh, that's the one that could be plus eight on block it's, it's extremely good for a defensive tool in this game extremely good and he does not need that for what so kind of character he is he is in my mind the most solid blanca with a peppering of shenanigan gimmicks on top and i say all that and i'm strangely not upset and that's that's because i've always been like blanca can be weird and shenanigany but he needs to be low tier and he needs to be knowledge checks at best this character is more than knowledge checks now so i have him at ninth but you could argue him down to around like sixth or fifth and i would be on board for that conversation i think this that blanca is very good now and he's he's very good in a new way in a solid way what other um, people did you study besides Meta RD uh, that were playing Blanca? Um, just uh, was a Met and Nemo, um, Nishkin, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got some local Blanca players. But that's not on the same kind of uh, of level gotcha. here. Or, well, oh. not even local uh, uh, LA, but mm -hmm. that's for me. It's kind of local. It used to be local. There you go. There you uh, go. But yeah, so so the character just uh, it's again it's potential because yeah, Mena's really the only one that's been appearing at the top level with him, and he's been using a lot of Luke to get there. But you mm -hmm. see the solidness in this character, and I go, like, he's up there. And again, this this tier list is not as widespread as previous tier lists in previous games. The best character and the worst character are relatively closer than the best character and the worst character in a lot of other games. So it's more compact, I guess, is a more compact way of saying that. Oh, makes sense. 
Okay, next up, Jury, the Capcom Cup million dollar winner. Where did you place Jury? I've got her at fourth. How about you? Wow, you ranked Jury higher than I did. Mm. I got her at sixth. She's okay. part of that interchangeable group. Um, but when push came to shove, I thought, well, a couple of these other characters were better. But Jury's got so much that really works in this game. She's got the neutral. She's got... People say she doesn't have corner carry. Maybe it's that she needs to spend a little bit more meter to get corner carry. And maybe it's not quite as good as those that are best. But she's got some pretty B-plus corner carry. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of her buttons are really good. Uh, a, a drive rush that's right up there with DJ. It's like, where are her weaknesses? Uh, her damage output, maybe she... Maybe damage outside of spending all resources similar to corner carry isn't as good but like it's up there once you have all resources and you get that hit and she can get that hit from a lot of different places yeah yeah jury's main weakness is, is having to stock up um, and we know in this game that having to stock anything is a, a significant disadvantage it depends um, on the like character though because she can get it a lot easier than some of the others that have to stock up i'll just say i that. agree i agree she she definitely has an ability to stock up easier but in that when you do that you're giving up your okazemi pressure you're giving up spacing you're giving up a lot in this game that's extremely good and and that's how come i don't think jury is is, is like you know the the one of the hands down best characters like with the luke and the kin but she's right up there like i said i have her at fourth um is, is that when you have to let up off the gas pedal in this game and, and to set some stuff up and to, to build resources that jury is a much worse character when she doesn't have her stocks built and and you you start factoring that in and it's like oh man like you're giving up quite a bit to get that um and i think it's a fairly good balance with this character and then you know talk about again that uh drive rush nerfs in my opinion are definitely coming um and that's going to have a heavy impact on this character if those happen. And because she's very heavily based around drive rush, she's very heavily based around rushdown. So I could actually see this character falling off a decent bit here in season two, even though she just won Capcom Cup. Um, I, I think that that, you know, she's she's very good. She's very strong. But but I think to, you know, to unlock her, it takes a good amount of skill and, and a good amount of patience and other stuff. Like that. She's fairly decent on the technical level. Yeah. And to the you're not wrong that the fact that she has to stalk something is an extra hoop to jump through and that's very significant in this game but when you look at someone like lily or maybe even jamie and you look mm -hmm. at jury jury's mobility and her her and her ability to back up and always have that constant jump threat makes you a little bit more anxious to approach jury or to to try to even position against her than you would against say um a lily so a lot more often jury players are going to be in the mid range and get to just do a stock up that they don't get punished for and people are like how often are you looking for jury to stock in the neutral and, and punishing it? it's like you're worried about so many other things you're worried about her pounce that it's it's hard to be ready for that kind of stuff and then uh, all those characters can also uh get stocks jamie kind of suffers the most here because he yeah. does have to absolutely give up to get a stock but like jury can do a combo that gives her a stock while she does yeah. the combo and same thing with yeah. lily so there's that but i think that she suffers the do. least of the characters that um that have to uh well yeah he can now especially with that forward throw in the corner uh but like i think she suffers the least from the extra hoop although it is still there I agree, oh. um, but if she can't back off and, and get her stocks, that's very often what I see people do, and that's where I try to pressure them, uh, drive rush in and, and go you know, crazy and stuff, but yes. Yeah. Okay, next up is Cammy, the blonde-haired clone that has amnesia. I just did a video on <laughs> I Ava got her recently. at eighth. Eighth. Uh, where do you, yeah, where do you got her? So this is another one of those characters that, again, like Chun-Li, I saw potential for early on, but even with Punk playing her, not realizing that potential, it's like, well, what are you exactly going to do? Uh, she gives me a hell of a time, but that's JP, and that's uh, just craziness of approach. Uh, she's a she's a more efficient Kimberly, a more, on, not honest, but more solid Kimberly in that way. Uh, and, and the thing is, her damage output, save for level three, oh my gosh, it's surprising every time, isn't yeah. quite there. Her corner carry is pretty good, but not as good as the rest. And we're kind of having to go down and split hairs. It's like she does great damage, but not the best. She does good corner carry, but not the best. I have her at fifth. I have her one above Ken and one below Jury. But she's one of these characters that people are entertaining to be top three, and some are even saying top one. Without, Ooh. like, I can't put her above Luke, man. I just yeah, that's, can't. That's wild. And, and I think that she's more... So again, because this is potential, and I said a lot of the same stuff about Chun-Li, Cammy is more unidimensional and it's not that she's one dimension but she has fewer dimensions for her approach she's gonna come down to either trying to play footsies or trying to uh jump in and mix her jump-ins up with dive kicks when both of those are really good for her like i'm saying fifth place overall good 
I just haven't seen anybody bring it together, and I think she's extra good against my character, but might have a hard time against, let's say, the likes of Blanca and a handful of others in this game. That all adds up to me to be fifth. Yeah, um, this is one of those characters where um, if if what happens in the past happens again, where they nerf everyone around Cami, uh, she's going to rise up the tier list quite a bit. Uh, right now, I think she's eighth overall because her weaknesses are pronounced enough where she's got to work decently hard to consistently get in and get into good spots. Um, but her ability to uh, dive kick people and to push people to the corner is decently uh, pretty potent. Um, but she's really a footsie with punish master character where if you're trying to basically keep her out um, and her ability to just kind of dive kick after that or spiral Earl in or, or do whatever is pretty good on reaction. Uh, we see Punk do this quite a bit when he's playing. Um, however... It takes quite a bit of skill to do that, um, and even though she's more straightforward with her game plan, it seems fairly decently balanced. It's, it's. I don't know if Cammy's ever going to be bad again. <laughs> like, I don't know if like Capcom allows that to happen. Uh, I always joke that their CEO is like a huge fan of the character. Um, but um, so yeah, I've got her at eighth, um, and it is possible she she goes up a little more further uh, if the characters around her get hurt. How about the poster boy of the franchise, Ryu? So I've got Ryu at twelfth. Um, I think the buffs that he got were definitely good for like burnout and a few other scenarios. Um, however, I think his biggest weakness is the fact that Luke and Ken exist in this game and they are much better characters than he is. Uh, and you know, shout outs to Akuma here is coming very soon. Um, I, but I think that Ryu is definitely quite a bit better than he once was. Uh, the, the buffs have definitely been significant and we might even see a little bit more. I actually advocated for a, um, a, uh, a buff to his fireball damage, uh, probably bringing it up to 650 uh, because Ryu is the master of the Hadoken. In the timeline where he's at right now, this is the strongest character or one of the strongest characters in the entire franchise and his fireball does the same damage as Kent's. And it's like, what? It's like, how does, how does that work? Um, and you know, you compare like a, a Ken's a shuriken damage to, to Ryu's and it's more, it does more hits, all that other kind of stuff. Like Ryu should be a, the definitive fireball throwing mid range zoning character. Uh, but unfortunately Capcom did not see it that way and they made him mostly rush down. Um, so I'm hoping they gravitate the character a little bit back more towards his, um, his original roots. Um, but as is right now, he's still pretty good. Ending Walker is playing him, Paladin is playing him. They're both doing pretty good with the character. Um, so there's there's a lot of potential here for him to, to move up, especially again, if they nerf the other Shoto. Uh, but I do think that Ryu is pretty good right now. I have him smack dab in the middle of the tier list at 11. He has gotten better in some interesting ways. Was it Valle that was saying that it still doesn't quite get the job done where he needs it? Because now when you stock up, you don't really want to throw it. But then that means you can't throw a fireball in order to hold that stock. And that sort of works against his strategy and is a big part of his main strategy. So there's that. He's also, you said, his biggest nerf is the fact that Ken and Luke exist. Well, the fact that Akuma is coming might be buffing him right now, because I think a lot of players are playing Ryu in preparation for playing Akuma. And But when Akuma drops, uh, bye-bye Ryu to an even greater degree, right? Oh, man. Yeah. So he's, he's kind of that... I don't know if it's acceptable to have Ryu smack dab in the middle. You certainly don't want him lower than that. And if they made him better, I think he has room to grow on the tier list. I think the main question right now is, is he fun to play? Because that's, I think, the most important part of this character as the poster boy, as someone that people are going to come in and like, I don't know who to play. Well, I'll start with what I know. I'll start with what I recognize. He's a gateway into the game and he needs to be a fun gateway. Um, outside of that, like I said, shouldn't be below halfway. So I'm okay if they give him a few buffs and that that knock him up a few pegs above a few other characters. But I will focus more on making him enjoyable. And as long as that's the case, then then we're good. Yeah, it's what we talked about earlier, having the stock up moves, Ryu is definitely one of the characters that has to do that to be very strong, right? And uh, what you said earlier about him being mid-tier, he generally actually has a very good history when he's about mid-tier or maybe, you know, somewhere around there that people will play him in tournament and, and keep him at a competitive level. So I don't think he needs to be a top-tier character because if he is a top-tier character, everyone is going to play him. And all of a sudden, you know, your character variety just goes right out the window. Um, so somewhere around like an upper mid-tier, somewhere mid-tier, like and, and never below that. Uh, that should pretty much be the standard with Ryu but again if you nerf those other Shoto characters a lot more people are going to play him uh, but we'll see what happens with Akuma I would feel so bad for Luke and Ken if that happened <laughs> all right Ed the newest and the most popular uh, mm. like I gotta say this when Aki and Rashid came out they both had their nor like normal surge in popularity Rashid never got too high I think he was like 15th or something and like Aki got up to I think fifth overall on the charts and then they both dropped they've just both been on the decline 
Ed debuted at number one. People are playing the crap out of Ed. That doesn't mean he's necessarily a great character, but they did something with Ed that made him much more attractive to play than the other two characters. Maybe it's he's that he's straightforward, but where do you have Ed? Maybe it's that he's a sick, sick looking dude and people gravitate to that for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've got Ed at 14th. Um, I had this character higher initially, um, and I think he's getting a fair amount of downloading happening right now because of um, the startup on his moves is pretty significant. Uh, the recovery on his moves is significant. Um, and his game plan, like he's got great Okazemi pressure. Like he, it's one of the, his biggest traits is like when he's able to, to get a knockdown and stuff on you, he can keep up Oki pressure in a variety of ways. He's got a really good tool set overall, but I'm not too big on his anti airs and a few other things. So. I, I think that he's got potential, but like there were so many people playing this character and then so many people dropped him. Uh, that, that that ranked pretty heavily, or uh, weighed pretty heavily on my ranking here with him. Um, so I, I think 14th is a pretty good spot for him. Uh, I'm not super big on this character, uh, although I think that there's, there's potential for him to rise up if the other characters get nerfed around him. Yeah, I have him at 16th and he's so you only need to watch a couple of anti-ed tech videos to realize oh this character has some holes in his gameplay he could jump up pretty quickly if certain holes get patched but as it exists now it's knowledge checks but his pressure his situations are not as good as a lot of his roster mates even when he drive rushes in and he puts pressure on you that way the situations that he's in are not as scary as others and it's important in this game that you make those situations scary and you convert off of them he doesn't have an overhead he doesn't have a lot of plus normals he's got a excuse me he's got a spend bar to be plus and a lot of his situations where he does the uh, the psycho snatcher and such they tend to be uh gimmicky like they're 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 situations where it's like yeah he can he can pressure you here and he's at advantage but the decisions that he has to make uh, similar to like lily if you don't drive reversal her when she comes in with a spire she's plus one but her options off of that plus one are not that great if she goes for the coverall and does like a standing light kick she might hit you and she might get a combo, but the benefit from all that, I don't know if it's worth it. But then if she goes for her higher level uh, 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 wins off of that or advantages, she might get countered because you might neutral jump if she goes for a command grab or, you know, you try to throw or whatever it is. And so Luke is similar in that a lot of his situations are not great. He only has the throw strike mix ups. He doesn't have the high low mix up or uh, the, yeah, well, the overhead low mix ups. And, uh, and people say he's got the worst jab in the game, which for a boxing character is kind of weird, kind of surprising. Yeah. But all that adds up to you can put this character under the microscope and have a real strong game plan really quickly. The community has figured him out fairly rapidly. And so I think he's um, somewhere here in this bottom 10, threatening into the bottom five with where he is right now. But again, I'm, very I'm curious if Oh, I'm, I'm curious if season two might actually bring a few buffs for him. Uh, where if Capcom's like, yeah, a lot of people are trying this character and then moving on from him, that's usually a very bad sign. And I wonder if they might throw a few quality of life things in there for him, uh, even though he just came out not that long ago. Next up, Honda. Where did you put Honda? I've got Honda at 18th. Um, I think this is one of the worst characters in the game. Um, I think that his... Um, Ability to go brainless and to just deplete large portions of your drive gauge and, and health for that matter is really good um, And I, I've run into a number of very top-end Honda players some of the, the higher ranked ones And the way they play this character and the way they go brainless with them is really poor design on Capcom's part um, This is one of the most hated characters. Um, I know he's got some really lopsided matchups We talked about Dalsum earlier. Uh, that is a terrible uh, 7 3 8 2 matchup against Honda. Um, he's got some bad stuff you know, so I, I don't envy the, the task of Honda players, especially having to play that way. Um, and I think that the, one of the things they need to do is they probably should buff his health and then um, reduce or increase, I should say, the startup of his sumo splash. Um, so it's a little easier to react to and Honda players just don't randomly just keep throwing it out there in the middle of the match. Um, but the way this guy plays um, and his stats online, he's the number one character in terms of the character stats on the master ranked. Um, he wins more than anyone else, which, you know, it's there's a little bit of uh, um, apples to oranges there in terms of, of you know how many people are playing him and other things like that those are always a factor in those stats uh, but honda does tend to to gravitate towards the higher end of the list because of his style of play um, but he is right now just so brainless the way he plays uh, i really hate that um, and i really hope that capcom's able to address this character and make him just a little bit more thoughtful a little bit more calculated and you can do that by just making his moves uh, a lot less of the just do it variety what hey i hope this works let me throw it out there because even if it doesn't work eh, it's probably going to be okay i have honda dead last I lose to Hondas, by the way, and it sucks. 
I don't always lose to him, but to me, and especially at the level that I'm at, around 1800 MR, so it's a knowledge or it's a it's a reactions check. It's can you perfect parry the headbutts, and then can you anti air the butt slams? If you can do that, you'll win against all of the Hondas that I've experienced thus far. I reserve the possibility that maybe there's a better approach, thoughtful Honda out there, but this character doesn't play much footsies. This is a special move character. So with that in mind, the balancing him becomes almost, almost secondary. It's like you're not going to really get there by buffs and nerfs. This character is, I, I think this is the poorest designed character in this game. And I don't fully fault the Street Fighter 6 dev team. I think they did a lot with what they had here. But the character and who he is and how he's played and the moves that they have to have in here, they just, they're kind of just specials only. And in this game where so much more of it is about the neutral, like Honda doesn't play much neutral. Honda's mm -hmm. looking for his strategic guesses through the neutral. And that's, once you beat it, it sucks and he loses and people are ready to say, ah, it's, it's not very fun to play against him. And I can't think it's all that fun to play as him, except for when you're steamrolling people. But how, how quickly does that run out as you climb the ranks? And how satisfying is that at the end of the day when it just came down to you were testing your opponent's reactions and they weren't there? It's like, well, okay. But he's pretty one-dimensional in that way. And I don't exactly know what I would do to make him better. I think he needs quite a bit of a rework, something that peppers in some kind of a strategy in the neutral. But it's hard. And so this character's low. I don't know how to make him better without breaking the game and making him too good. I, I don't think he should be good at all. I don't. I think he's too good for the way he plays already, and he's the worst. So mm. I don't think he's a very well-designed character, and therefore it's like maybe hit the drawing board. Of course, they can't really do that again, but uh, worst worst design character in the game. Yeah, it's it's how come I advocate for more health and then um, less um, speed uh, and. It, uh, less difficulty on reacting to his specials, basically. Uh, and that will make him more thoughtful. Uh, it's just, you know, you can't just randomly throw spaghetti at a wall and hope it sticks. Yeah. All right. Your main character, Aki, where did she mm -hmm. end up? So I've got Aki at 20th. Um, I'm about uh, 1750 MR uh, uh, on a good day. Um, and then, um, <laughs> uh, and that was, uh, so I did 1800 MR with JP and getting there with Aki was about five times harder. Uh, this is one of the, the most technically difficult complex characters I've ever played, uh, partially because she's backwards. Um, the person who designed this character, I think at, at Capcom has a dyslex uh, dyslexia or something like that. Um, because basically uh, most characters anti-airs in Street Fighter are crouching heavy punch. Uh, that's a very typical thing. With Aki, it's crouching heavy kick. And just getting the muscle memory of that stuff down, all these other kind of things down, it takes a long time to get there with this character. And your reward for doing that is uh, I've got her at 20th, um, almost dead last, um, is, is a very, not very potent character. Uh, yeah, she can she can do some great damage if she can get you there. Um, her, her damage in neutral is very weak. Um, you have to have poison uh, and you have to have the opponent cornered to really get damage and stuff with her. And, and she is so unbelievably complex. I think she's more difficult to play than Monat. It was in Street Fighter V. I played Monat as well in V. Um, this character is insane. And, and the reward for, for playing her is just not very good. And, and that is showing up very heavily in the stats. Um, there are almost no one playing this character. Uh, this is one of the, the, the least utilized and least played and least seen characters in the entire game. Um, I will say that the amount of kudos though I get from, from playing this character are the people that run into it like, oh man, I love playing Rocky. You know, that's so nice to see. That That is a re really nice advantage with the character. Uh, I definitely never got that with JP. I got exactly the opposite. I got, I hate your JP and I will never play him again. <laughs> that's that's what JP players expect. Um, uh, so there's, there's some street cred here. Uh, um, for playing Aki, um, and, and I do think she has some good stuff going for her, um, but it's just, it's very incomplete because stuff like her level three, um, like from a, her fireball, like a normal standard combo that should work, will just randomly whiff. Uh, we've got a video up here on, on, on YouTube here of her um, her Super 2 whiffing uh, as an anti-air in numerous cases and stuff. And it's just there's so many things about this character that feel very much incomplete. Like Capcom did not do a very good job of making her well-rounded and, and, you know, have her function like most of the other characters in the game. Um, so I, I really feel like Aki is is pretty bad. Um, you can see a you know, player like Broski or Kara Shipney. Um, you can see them play and do some great stuff with the character. But of course, they, they you know, with their incredible technical level, they have one drop and she's dead, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, oh, 
okay, so there's no room for error. You've got to play perfect, and you've really got to play out, out player competition and, to win with this character. And it's just, it, it is, she's a pretty abysmal DLC character. Even though I love playing her, like I have a blast with this character. Like this is, this is a, a classic example of Capcom messing up a DLC character because no one's playing her and she's not making any kind of impact online or in tournament. And it's like, what the heck did you just do, Capcom? Uh, so I, I hope, I hope that they're able to buff this character up so that she's actually relevant in the scene. Um, but right now she's a, almost a complete and total flop of a DLC character. Hmm. I have her at 17th. A lot of that is true. And the one of the biggest things that holds her back generally is the fact that she's got that extra hoop to jump through. And it's even harder than a lot of the characters that have to stock up. She has to actually hit you with the poison and then she has to capitalize on it and get another hit. And that's a tall order. And they sort of designed her around that because when she gets that, you're hurting. Yes. She's hurting you. Yes. But that's In a the big corner. if. Yeah. Yeah. And she and, and like her combos do she has a decent bit of corner carry, doesn't she? When when you're spending some meter and, and knocking people forward. It's certainly there. Um I, I definitely wouldn't call it bad. It's probably like a, a B um a, on a mm -hmm. great scale. So what saves Aki from being one of the absolute worst in the game, a matter of fact bottom three, is her fireball drive rush. She gets to follow a fireball in and she gets to negate neutral to a substantial amount. The characters that can do this... Oh, that's another thing I should have said, not Chun Li being in second place. She's got the fireball cover neutral situation. So does Ken, so For does sure. Jury. And that is that goes a long way in this game because so much of this game is about neutral. You're not drive rushing through that stuff. You're you're gonna have to hold it. You can't really jump over it. I know that you're you're not a fan of her anti airs. Gotten anti aired by Aki quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not saying she's got the best anti air of the game or anything like that. But uh, you can't just jump it. Is my point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so those things hold her up above being the worst in the game. But uh, like again, 17th, that's nothing to write home that's about. Good. Probably not going to put that on the fridge. She's yeah. not that great. But when she hits you, she hits you hard. And so how do you balance her from here? It feels like they over invested into that double hit scenario, hit you while you're poisoned kind of thing. And if they make her better in other places, like I, I like don't buff her damage. I think I remember you saying something about buffing her damage in a recent video. I'm like, no, dude, I don't think anyone should have their damage buffed. But it's hard, like, the utility is a little bit too good over here, and then they subtract it too much from before she gets those hits. I dare say it might have to be the kind of situation where you take something away from her from where she's really good in order to make her more well-rounded, and overall that will make her a better character because she's just too lacking otherwise before she gets that hit. But she's another one of those characters that I think is going to be particularly hard to balance correctly. And interestingly, like you say now, she's not that well designed, not that great in their execution. Uh, I don't think people are having a lot of fun playing against her, and it sounds like they're not having a ton of fun playing as her. But when you have a mechanic that's DOT, like her poison, we saw that not implemented very well with Fong, and they were afraid of it, and, and reasonably so. It's a hard thing to bring into the mix. And I think they did a better job with Aki than Fong, but I think they still haven't gotten there yet. And I don't know how much, it's like it's cool for variety, but I don't know how much you want to invest in this type of character in the future, because it's hard to make her work. Yeah, in, in, in talking about damage here, her Serpent Lash, her, where she whips you basically, the light one, that does mm -hmm. 500 damage, and the equivalent for JP would be his Cane Swing, it's both the same command, his does 1000 damage, so double the damage. And, you know, Aki can poison you and do other stuff like that, but this is a, this is a, this is why I'm advocating for the character getting more damage, because she can't keep up with the likes of JP damage-wise, and it's like, well, okay, the, the, she's never going to, to climb up the tier list if that's the case. Now, the other way they could do it as well is they could give her an extra second or two on her poison, um, it lasts for like I think eight seconds right now they can make that last in like you know nine or ten something like that um, that would give her more opportunities but even then I don't know if that's going to be enough for the character and what you did say about her fireball drive rush stuff is very important because that is an extremely good tactic in this game and Aki is I don't want to say she's the best at it but she is she one of the be. best at that she yeah she be. is one of the best at that she's very 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 good at that um and, and but her ability to unlock that and to get massive damage off of it is not easy um she has to work very 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 hard to, to capitalize off of that unless the opponent is poisoned if Does they're poisoned it's a whole different thing ex for the fireball or can she just do regular fireball she does a regular fireball. It's her light. Yeah, one. see, yeah. Yeah, so she's got like both. jury has to stock it ken has to use ex to get full advantage out of that 
she's just doing the the standard. So that that's yeah. something. It obviously well, it, her, her fireball to... has the most recovery on it though. She has more recovery on her fireball yeah. than any other character in the game. Um, so it's a big commitment for her. Although she can ex slide out of it if if she sees it coming in time. Um, but that's you know easier said than done. Uh, it, it's it. She's got so many pronounced weaknesses. Um, but as you did say that that fireball drive rush stuff is very strong in this game. It just I don't know pressure. if that's her pressure is pretty damn strong it's and that fireball good. drive rush leads to pressure so she can get where she wants to be fairly i'm starting to think maybe she's a little bit better <laughs> uh, because I, I, in theory fighting like she can get where she wants to be and she can excel once she's there but she still does have those hoops to jump through and then yeah inconsistent moves things that don't seem to work as as effectively as they are supposed to where they're supposed to that counts against her so yeah 17th yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna burst your your poison bubble here. Uh, and just poison. say that as you mentioned the uh, the um, moves not working how they 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 shouldn't uh, or how they should I should say um, her level three just uh, her super combos just don't work half the time and it's it's just like it's mind blowing that they don't. Uh, you have to use very specific setups, very specific combo routes, and you've got to have a million of them. And then her defense is awful. She's one of the worst defensive characters in the entire game. And then her hurt box, especially for stuff like cross ups, is ridiculous. It's like Capcom gave her a humpback that you can't see. And so she tries to walk under someone who's doing a cross up and it always tags her. And it's like, what? It's like, well, this is a skinny, small character. Why did you make her hurt boxes huge? Like, why does she have like Sakat's hurt boxes? So there's some really unusual things about the character. Uh, and as you mentioned and, and heard about from Capcom that when, when Fong was in development in Street Fighter V, he was one of the most dominant characters that they've, they've had in development, um, that they could not touch him, that he was just so powerful and so good. Uh, and I, again, it's another one of these archetypes that's very hard to balance. And you know, I, I would not be shocked to see Aki pretty much stay near the lower part of the tier list, much as Fong did pretty much throughout Street Fighter V's lifespan. Yeah, she's one of those, you give her too, you water her too much and she's gonna overtake the whole damn thing. Uh, all right, Zangief. Speaking of big fat hurt boxes, Zangief, the the premier grappler, the most pure of the grapplers. Where did he end up on your tier list? I've got him at 17th overall. Um, I think that Geef is actually in a pretty good spot. There's only one change I would give him, and that would be the ability to um, to uh, his OD um, lariat to be an anti cross up, uh, not against meaties. Um, but but against a late jump in or something like that that he would have enough ability to basically just uh, knock people out of the air with that It's so the one thing I would give him and then I would not touch him again um, I think that that most of the geef players that are out there right now just Will benefit quite a bit from some of the other characters getting nerfed. Yes I think it'll be a very significant significant buff for geef um, And I think he's good enough as is he, he tends to be pretty popular in the character stats It's not like he's a very rare character geef is very popular among a lot of people um, and, and so he's overall, I think, in a pretty darn good spot. Um, and I think that people need to get back to, to playing more fundamentals, more footsies for this grappler style of play. I think a lot of people got used to how he was in five, which was one of the most weird and, and probably poorly designed versions of Geef I think that's ever existed, uh, the Street Fighter V version of him. And I think this version of him is pretty darn good. Uh, makes a lot of sense. He can do the stuff he needs to do. Um, he's got good setups. Um, so I'm overall very happy with Geef in this game. Um, and I think he's in a good spot. I have him at 13th. Uh, he's hmm. the beginning of my second to lowest tier. So he's down there. But like mm -hmm. you said, I think he's where he kind of needs to be. He's got the tools to make a character like JP afraid a lot of the time. And I'm in the, so this is coming from, I'm, I'm using this example because it's a pretty lopsided matchup. It's zoner against someone that needs to get in. And specifically when I am at advantage, meaning Leaf's kind of outside of that sweep range and he's got to deal with my fireballs, I'm still not comfortable like I would have been even in, in previous games uh, because he has the options to get in. Now they're not going to work most of the time, but when they do, the payoff is pretty balanced there and the way he stays in and well, he drive rushes his way back in and puts you in more mix-ups. Uh, the fact that he can use his level two super as a fireball stopper, that's really good for the main difficult matchups that he's going to have in the fireball throwers. Uh, mm -hmm. But like the, and then the damage output, man, you punish somebody with uh, an EX SBD off of like a, of a DP, like you get a punish counter on that and you're doing super super levels of damage, which is what you expect from Zangief. So I think the character exists pretty well where he's at. He's not the best. He's got lopsided matchups, but that's the nature of a grappler. And he, like I say, he's the most pure grappler on the roster. When you go, well, what should we buff about him to make better? Everybody except for Zangief players go, <gasps> you know, because the idea mm -hmm. of buffing Zangief is terrifying. And so you go, well, like what you said, 
maybe the nerfs to those above him will be substantial bring things down a little bit bring him up a little bit as a result but man he doesn't need any rocket shoes himself just like let the rest of the cast settle a little bit further around him otherwise i think he's in a pretty good spot you know who i don't like uh rashid who's the next one up on the list here rashid with the best level two super in the game bar none and people some some people say blancas Nah, dude, this thing yeah, is just an oppressive force of nature. And if he's got a level three when a round starts, you can bet he's going to get, well, there's a good chance he's going to get two level twos. And when two level twos come out against you, who is it? Uh, I was watching 801 Strider. He's like, if a Rashid launches two level twos in a round, you're not winning that round. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that could happen <laughs> with this character. <laughs> and it's so unidimensional. He's got other stuff. I and mean, he's got weaknesses. But hot damn, that needs to change yesterday that 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 turns the game off it's not like he has to earn his way into it it's it's as soon as Rashid has distance on you or is on offense that's coming out and you're dealing with it regardless of where things were before it and that thing is silly so uh by the way I have Rashid <laughs> I have Rashid at eighth overall where'd you put Rashid? yeah I got him at ninth yeah ah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah so very close um this is a character who the pendulum is going to swing a little bit against him uh, because it started out where, where Rashid was was not considered to be very good. And then we saw people like Ochkun and a few others start to pick him up and play him and get some very good tournament results, some big wins with him. Third um, Capcom and, Cup. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a character who who has a lot of potential here. He's very technical, uh, but his offense and his like the offense from his like jabs and some of his mix up stuff is so good. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of Rashid players are going to have to replace their uh, light punch button after a month or two of playing the character because um, uh, it's just that's all they, they can pretty much hit. Um, but he's so technical. He does require a good amount of skill to play. Um, and he has enough stuff going for him that I, I don't mind this character being uh, on the stronger end. Uh, he's not like he was in five where he was just brain dead great and, and just had every tool that, that you could possibly want. No weaknesses, pretty much. Um, I, I don't feel like that's the case in this game. I think they've done a pretty good job with him. However, what you did say about level two is is pretty dead on that it, it's there are some answers to it but it feels like those answers are awful and when you have almost no answers uh for a move that comes out there and stays on screen for a long time and gives Rashid a bunch of options that seems like kind of poor design right there it seems like you've, you're basically just saying like hey Rashid go ahead and play a one player game here for the next 10 seconds or whatever and do whatever you want to and there's no there's no recourse no one can do anything and stuff about oh, that even that's if you get thrown you take the mix up and you get thrown that thing's still on there and you're still dealing with it right afterwards. It's not like you're out of it. Yeah. So I, a I think that's a level three of a level two. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're good. It, it, and, and so that's probably something they should tweak there a little bit where they, they should probably tone it down just a bit because it's just, it's a match stopper right now. It just comes out and it's like, well, Rashid's got every bit of privilege. He's now the best character in the game. What are you going to do for the next 10 seconds? And, and the answer is what you're going to do is you're probably going to die. So there you go. Yeah, I, and how do you balance that? I, my first thing that comes to my mind is make that go away if he gets hit. Is that too much? I don't know. But right now, it, like you can't even attack him. You can't drive reversal because if you do, even if it's successful, you're just going to get clipped and he's going to get up and drive rush in and pick up the combo. It's so round freezing for the mm -hmm. defender. It's like, yeah, and, and there are situations. I saw an awesome answer by Kakaru who where he... Perfect parries the enhanced eagle spike coming in and then punishes with a double spike and goes into level three and it was awesome. And it's so you're like, cool, there's an answer for it. But like you said, that's super hard to do. And the the risk versus reward is very situational. You have to have enough meter, you have to have the kind of character that can attack like that. For the yeah. most of the cast, it's not a thing. And uh, the, the, something needs to be done about that super. I wouldn't mind, first it, it, of all, making it a level three. But even there, it's just, it's, it's not that it's so good it's that it stops the round capcom it stops the round and sometimes it does it twice yeah yeah and, and as you mentioned even that example i'm um, doing a perfect parry on it that's so much uh damage scaling that kakaru you know like it cool it killed rashid on that case but if rashid had more than 50 percent health like, he's living through that and you've just consumed all of your resources to take off a minuscule amount of damage on that character so it's it's really out of balance right now mm -hmm. And, and he does start out, at the beginning of rounds, he's a lot worse. When he doesn't have the resources and when he doesn't have the momentum and pressure. And another thing that people bring up a lot about him is that he didn't have reliable anti-airs, which was weird. His EX DP didn't have proper uh, invincibility. 
mm -hmm. and the way it would lose invincibility too quickly or, or just, but they fixed that so now he's yep, got his invincibility uh I've, I've heard people still talking about that it's like no that's that's not a thing anymore take that off yeah. so uh, yeah seventh overall for where i got him right now or eighth overall where i got him right now seventh between us right and can, can uh, uh, uh rashid players trade their anti-airs for akis please and and then they can really complain about something <laughs> yeah or jp's anyway. hey <laughs> i disagree with that one but yeah <clears throat> his crouching f we're not going to talk about jp anymore okay <laughs> next character starts with the j rhymes with jp it's jamie where did you put mm. jamie i've got jamie at 16th um, I think he's a little better than people give him credit for. I think the buffs that he got here um, with the Ed Patch were actually significant uh, because he's able to, to do uh, quite a bit more drinks and stuff. And it's he's one of the characters that, that people start um, talking about, like the top tier traits in Street Fighter Six. Like what is good in this game? And Jamie inevitably ends up in those lists fairly high up there. Um, I know that you played this character um, in the beta. Uh, and uh, this is one of those characters that, who's got a decent amount of popularity despite how low tier he is. I actually think he's a little better than people give him credit for. Not a ton better, uh, but that's why I've got him at 16th. Damage output's not quite there. The hoops he has to jump through, and they did buff those a little bit. Now he gets a drink off of level two, or I'm sorry, off of throw. And uh, and and if he's in the corner, he gets to put pressure afterwards. Like that's got to be significant for him. He's got really he's swift in the neutral. He doesn't have great answers for fireballs, and that's probably a big part of it. But if you have a slow fireball startup like these guys, he, these guys here. Uh, he can zip right past you on, on the uh, startup of it, and and you're in the blender there. Uh, he's got a, <laughs> he's got a dive kick, but does he? I mean, it works for him sometimes, but there's other times where like my standing medium medium kick, which kicks at your shins, will beat the dive kick, and it's like what? Uh, the, like he's really good at level four, but will he get to level four? And this is a hard character to balance. It, I think it comes down to maybe he doesn't lose all of his drinks at the end of a round. Maybe he loses one or two drinks. What does that look like? But that might make him too good, like right out of the gate. A, a big part of it, a big black and white part of it is his inability to navigate fireballs. I think that's holding him back. So like in certain matchups, maybe he's a little bit better, but because of that, that's a big thing that's gonna give him a natural ceiling that he can't get by. Um, so, oh, and, and by the way, I have him 15th. <laughs> I didn't say that already. Uh, right around Ed and Aki. So, yeah, I, I do think he has juice. Like, he's got decent neutral tools. Uh, maybe his damage output isn't there. It's it's something to do with having to build up through the drinks, and that's a hard puzzle to solve without breaking him. But I think it's... Is this, is this a character that we want to be better than he is right now? I mean, I think he needs a little bit of juice, haha, a little something, but I can also see him running away with things because of his general design. Yeah, it's he, he's in that, you know, Fei Long, Yan Yang kind of mold. And, and if they buff him too much, he's going to be very dominant. We're, we're, we're going to remember the days where Jamie was not played, uh, and, and those are going to be long over. Uh, and then one of the suggestions I, I had in another video was um, that if uh, Jamie has a drink in a system uh, that the in the round ends, uh, his next drink is like half the, the startup time uh, that it normally is. So that would not carry over any drinks. It would just make his next one much faster. So you're basically able to get that extra drink out there and maybe signified somewhere in the UI um, that, you know, hey, this next drink that Jamie does and have a different animation or a different like... Um, um, sound effect that he does just to signify that you know you shouldn't try to punish him normally because he's going to have a very fast swig there um and that might be a way of, of letting him get some drinks in the system a little faster uh without breaking the character guile another probably mm. high tier that we haven't talked about yet where did you place yeah. guile i've got guile at six um, because this is here's a big thing is, is if all the other characters get nerfed guile is going to rise up a lot uh, and I would not normally advocate for nerfs for a character that I've got at six like this, but you've got to be very careful that if you're taking out all the other top tiers, Guile's going to get really good, uh, especially if, um, um, you know, some of his bad matchups, uh, the JP matchup, uh, if, if those are less of a factor because less people are playing JP, then Guile's going to really start to run away with stuff. Um, so um, I think he's a pretty darn good character. He's fairly technical, um, and I could actually see them potentially tweaking the character just a bit down uh, just to keep him in line with the rest of the cast uh, in the Season 2 update. How about you? I have him at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th overall. Mm -hmm. Yes, one of the first things that comes to mind is that page of nerfs for JP were a page of buffs for Guile. This was his worst matchup by far in the game. He's very oppressive to many other characters, and now his worst matchup got significantly better. That's a big thing to start with in terms of his overall placement on the tier list. 
Like you're not going to run, one, it's not as hard of a matchup and two, you're not going to run into as many where it used to be like if you're a guy playing in tournament or even just going on ranked, you're going to run into some JPs. That might not be the case anymore. JP has been steadily declining slowly but surely in the popularity and he's got, I mean, this character has been good since the beginning, right? Like when was, when was Guile bad? Maybe there's a, mm. a scenario or two, but he's never that bad and he's often yeah. really good. This, the way he functions works really well within the Street Fighter atmosphere, and that's the case here too. He's a zoner, but he can absolutely use Drive Rush in on you. And who was it? Someone, uh, it might have been Strider again when I was recently watching some of his stuff saying that it's... Guile takes Drive Rush off the table in a way that other characters just don't. I think Strider said it like, mm. you can't Drive Rush against Guile, which I think that's a little too much. You can still mm. Drive Rush against him. But the fact that he's putting so many horizontal hitboxes out on the screen naturally is going to nerf Drive Rush, and they're ones that you can't zip past with your Drive Rush. So the fact that he also attends directly and matter-of-factly to one of the strongest abilities, one of the core abilities to this game, gets him up there, and he's part of that really strong top tier that all could be sort of interchangeable. I have him here at 7th, uh, at but we could negotiate him even higher up for sure. Next up on the list, Lily. Where'd yeah, you put Lily? I've got Lily dead last at 21st. Um, and I think she's in a low tier all of her own. Um, I think she's the worst character in the game fundamentally. Um, and it, it, it's uh, there, there's two people I know that play this character and actually have results with her. Uh, that would be Hibiki, uh, the Beast. Uh, shouts to him. He does really well in tournament when he enters. Uh, he's uh, pretty much the only one doing it. And then uh, Dream King. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, pretty much everyone else has dropped this character, completely moved on from her. Um, her fundamental game plan is not very good. Um, she lacks a lot of the tools that the other cast members have just kind of inherently baked in. Uh, for example, she doesn't have anything with full invincibility like on her DP. Um, even if she's got a wind stock, um, even if it's an OD, it, it still does not have invincibility on it. Or you look at a character like Jury, where she only has to spend OD meter to get full invincibility. Um, Lily just completely lacks that. And it's like, ooh, like... Uh, is, is, that, so that's what you're doing here. Um, so I, I think she is hands down the worst character in the game. Uh, I think she's the hardest character to win with um, consistently. However, I do wonder if there's a good amount of juice here with modern Lily. Um, that might be actually the superior way to play this character. Uh, that is where I'm seeing the most headway and the most uh, amount of players making damage at right now on the scene um, is with the modern controls version. Of course, you've got the 20% damage nerf on there, but... Uh, it seems to unlock a good amount of stuff for the character, and I'm wondering if Capcom basically had a modern Lily on their battle, battle balance team, um, or some some person who was really good with the character, and that's how come they're they're really afraid of this character and buffing her too much. Um, so her game plan is very straightforward. Um, she's a very she's a very easy character in terms of like her fundamentals and like what she needs to do. However, making all that stuff work co cohesively, make it all work together is very hard to do. Um, so it, it, I think she's a very, very poor character in terms of her strength. Uh, I think she's a very interesting character and I would like to see a little bit more juice added to her um, to even her out. Um, but she's got so many problems like with how her moves combo or don't combo into each other um, where you have to be, you know, perfect spacing, perfect timing, all this other kind of stuff um, that I just, I don't think she's very good. Yeah, I have her at 18th, so three characters worse than her, but she's certainly, again, nothing to write home about. She she has some really good stuff in a vacuum. She has maybe the best single neutral maneuver, but to get there, she's got to spend two bars, and she's got to get a wind stock. And the answer to it is you can drive reversal, and it's a two-bar wash, and now you guys are both back to neutral. But in and of itself, it, it's going to get through fireballs on reaction. It's going to get her in and make her plus in your face. If you don't use the bar or you don't have the bar to do that with, it's something you know that's scary. And then that makes you, the threat of that is something that she can use as well. So, But she's the kind of character that has to, in order to take advantage of that, stock up all of those things that I just talked about. Have enough meter, have the wind stock, and then be at a threatening range and then not use it so that you will make a stupid jump at her or you know just get antsy and if you're a higher level player you're probably not going to do that but she does have the maybe the best single maneuver in the game for neutral she's also got the best anti-air dp in the game but mm -hmm. that's going to cost again a bunch of resources to get to she can't be safe jumped in the same way that everybody else can be safe jumped because her anti-air dp is a little bit faster it's like one frame faster when she does the is it the ex with a stock in it so uh, so she's got these things that are conspicuous and good, but they don't necessarily 
uh, pour over into each other. It's not like if you use one, now you can take advantage of the best parts of the next one. And she's got some pretty okay damage as a grappler, but a lot of that is... Again, it doesn't spill into it, so like she'll get a command grab here and there, but then we're back to the drawing board. Uh, yeah, I, and I think that you could start by giving her OD, wake up, non wind clad stocked DP, uh, make that invincible, like give her something on defense. So something like that. You don't want her to go too high as a grappler, as a weird grappler on the list, but she could definitely take something. It's like you're safe to give her a little something to make her climb up a little bit because where she's at right now, she's pretty lacking. She's pretty yeah. wanting. I do think her damage is pretty good, though. That's one thing I will say. So, if she can, if she can land some of that stuff, yeah. Uh, speaking of good damage, Marissa, where'd you place her? I've got Marissa at tenth. Um, this is a character who I think is pretty strong right now overall, um, but mostly in the way of explosive damage. Um, I think she's getting downloaded a good amount um, because the the game plan for Marissa has very little variety to it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that once you start to really lab this character, she's not as good. And so she started off very strong in the tournament scene. Uh, people are, you know, looking at the players going after her and like, oh, you know, this character's gonna be so dominant in tournament and stuff. And then kind of got figured out a bit. Um, I still think she's very good. 10th uh, overall is still wonderful in this game, but it's, She's not as good as, as people initially made her out to be, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, because there's a lot of, like, if Marissa's, if Marissa tags you, it sucks, right? Because she's hitting mm -hmm. you really hard. She might be carrying you to the corner. Uh, it's, she, she has a lot of juice, but she's slower. And if you are doing, you know, say, say you're doing uh, meaties on her wake up, she doesn't have great answers to that. There's a lot of gimmicky stuff. Like when she goes into the clinch, and she's got a hit of armor. Uh, like that, when you first experience it, looks really scary. It almost looks like a perfect anti-air in the way that you use it, but then you find ways around it, and you find out that a lot of her armor is only upper body, so then you go, oh wait, she's especially weak to low forwards. Are those popular in this game? Do those have some utility in this game? And you quickly start to, to see, like, like you say, like there's, there's ways of figuring her out, and people have. So I have her, uh, let's see, at 10, 11, 12th overall. So yeah, right there, right towards the middle of it all. But and 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 I don't want her to become a season three Abigail. So be careful with your buffs. I don't know. Similar to Zangief, I think other characters can come down a little bit. I think everybody has their damage nerfed a little bit, and she still has top damage, but she's not killing you as quickly. That might be a little rough for her, but I don't know. This is the kind of character that can go topsy turvy pretty quick. All right, next up is Dalsim. Where did you place Dalsim? So I've got him at 13th overall. Um, this character I think is fairly underrated and we're starting to see people pick him up and do very well with him, especially some of the, the Dalsim loyalists. Uh, very technical and very different than he was in Street Fighter V, um, but he also has some very heavy advantage matchups uh, against uh, Honda and Geef. Um, I know Honda and Geef players just hate this character with a passion, just absolutely hate him. Um, and we're going to see more of that come up with time because the setups we're seeing from Dalsim, like a, a player like Waichi Mochi, um, we're starting to see some really strong control of matches and other stuff that this character is very well known for. And just his learning curve was so large in this game because he was such a big departure from prior versions of the character um, that, that he's starting to come on very strong right now. Where do you have Dalsim at? He was a beast that was slow to be figured out, but he was a beast in Street Fighter V. Uh, he still might be that, but he's not that yet by a good margin as far as I can see in Street Fighter VI. So with that in mind, I've got him at uh, one below Zangief at 14th overall. And again, he might, he might be growing. I've seen some things with Dalsim. He's, he's definitely a character, but as has always been the case with him, yeah, he's got those lopsided matchups. Some are going to be really in his favor, others not so much. You're not going to see a ton of people exploring him because he's so weird and different and requires a specific type of player to really get into. So still a lot of question marks, but so far the juice that we've seen out of him doesn't have me putting him um, outside of the bottom 10 yet. So, yeah. Nah. Sorry, Dalsim. You're, it's just, that's your lot in life, but you get to be in almost every Street Fighter, so there's that. Uh, Kimberly, we're almost done here. Kimberly, where'd you get her? I've got her at 15th. Um, I think that she's very much kind of an all or nothing character. Uh, she yeah. gets you in the corner and she just destroys you there. Uh, very large damage, great combos there. Uh, I don't think she's got much in the way of neutral play. Um, and I don't think like her anti airs or reversals and stuff are, are much to write home about. Um, and so I think she ends up really falling apart when you lab her quite a bit. 
Um, so I think she's good. I think she can she can play decently. And again, if all the other cast members above her get nerfed, which is, you know, the, not all of them are going to do it, but quite a few of them are probably going to happen here. She's going to rise up the list quite a bit there because her ability to push you to that corner and keep you there is going to get even better. Um, so I can see this character getting... Uh, not needing a lot of extra buffs and just kind of rising up because everyone else falls down around her. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I've got her. Yeah, I have her higher than my than part of my gut wants to or sorry, lower than part of my gut wants to say. I have her at 19th overall. So I, I tend to lose to Kimberly's, but that's also, like I said, JP has a hard time with this character because she throws spaghetti at the wall and if and when it sticks, then she's got some pretty scary stuff. But yeah, she doesn't have a lot of the things that are she doesn't have good neutral she has guessy gimmicky neutral and that's going to get you so far but she's going to run into ceilings and those ceilings are very conspicuous so it's more true for honda but i see her potential as as the game progresses as people get more experience against her she's only gonna get worse so right now maybe she's a little bit better than 19th you could argue that and i wouldn't have too much to say against you but i think where she ultimately is going to be is somewhere down around there um in given that you have explored this game and given that you're not getting hit with a bunch of knowledge checks but i mean that that has to be where we're basically talking about this and i just say that she wins more than she will be winning she's going to continue to get worse if all things stay the same because she relies primarily on um not very solid stuff and then yeah her, her stuff in the corner is crazy and it sucks to get there and, and that kind of sucks too when you got there because because of not solid stuff yeah, but uh yeah it's kimberly not a great look for me yeah uh, you play jp i i'd actually feel a little a little bad for you in that matchup because that's a that's got to be a special kind of pain I appreciate that. We'll so, edit that yeah. out first so that you can, you know, save face with all that stuff. But I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. And last but maybe least, Manam. Yeah, I've got her at 19th. Um, her weakness to drive rush is tremendous. Uh, watching a specialist like Idom play this character uh, and just getting uh, rushed down by Just a Kid's jury and just not yeah. being able to do anything. And I mean anything at all just completely losing to it you do not want to be susceptible to drive rush in this game that is one of the worst things one of the worst weaknesses to have and manon might be the worst character against drive rush in the entire game um so i do hope that capcom addresses that here in season two uh to give her the ability to defend against drive rush um and then we, the other side of the coin here, though, is this is a very random and wild character. And maybe you do not want to have this character be very good. Uh, one of the best uh, players of Manon is actually called Random. <laughs> That's his name. Um, and he's very good. He's very strong. But there's there's very much that, that aspect to his gameplay of how he plays his character. And you know, just as we were talking about, like more thoughtful and calculated play is definitely what we want. Uh, you do not want to overbuff a character like this. So I don't think Manon is... is, is super far away from where she should be at 19th where i have her um if she goes up a spot or two that's fine um but this is a character uh that just give her some quality of life stuff and then move on she's fine still people are playing her even though she's not all that great and they're getting results with her in tournament so i have her at 20th so pretty close and i have uh, i don't think she's good obviously i don't think she's good the thing with manong is that she is threatening from relatively far away with her sweep and with her overhead, which are both susceptible to DI, like you were saying. But the fact that she's scary from that distance as well as when she's in your face as a grappler can get you to make stupid decisions, like jump when you're in her red zone, and that's what she wants you to do. Now, if you just play neutral with Manon, you're probably winning. I mean, there are a couple characters that have a harder time than others, but make her make those guesses, right? Keep her at bay or drive impact when she does it. Uh, and if she gets in and gets a command grab, so what? If it kills you, it kills you, right? That's its own thing. But for the most part, you really don't have to worry about command grab too much because you're going right back to neutral and guess who sucks in neutral, baby? So when you approach things like that, and by the way, I, I got that from watching an MC Mora video recently. He's like, this is how I look at the match. I'm like, you know what, Mora? That's exactly what I need to do. And since I have started doing that, the Manal matchup has been much easier. She sucks in neutral. She might get you with her strongest thing, but is she going to get you with her strongest thing enough times to win the round before you kill her? And, and her defense is nothing to... to write home about either she's got to use supers to be invincible on wake up if you play that way just vegas odds you're gonna win uh, more often than you lose so the and so the 
the answer to the character becomes so quickly conspicuous. And like that's not everything to it. There's more that can go down in a matchup against Manon. But if you go in with that basic strategy, you're already going to do pretty well. And it doesn't take a lot to get to understanding that. And so it's like, yeah, it's rough. And again, I don't, I don't want her super buffed. She should be in somewhere in the lower tiers. It's kind of cool. I like her gimmick. I like the idea. We got to have some representation for grapplers, all that. Fine. Don't make her too good. Bring other people down around her a little bit, but yeah. So I don't know how you would how you would specifically nerf her. It's rough with these kinds of characters with grapplers, especially ones that have snowball command grab. Ugh. But uh, yeah, I, I she could get a little something, but not too much. Yeah, I would give her crouching light kick uh, one less frame of startup on it, make it four frames. Sure. Um, that's one of her best ways of checking drive rush, and she doesn't get much off of it. It's literally just a drive rush uh, check, and that that I would make that ability a little better for her. I think we talked about everybody. Is that everyone? Yep. Did you want to put Akuma on the list already? Or, or <laughs> do you want to... we, we, we can make a spot above Luke for Akuma. That would be fine. Yeah, that's where he's going anyway, right? So <clears throat> Probably. Well, guys, uh, so you should be seeing our final Season 1 Street Fighter Six tier lists on your screen right now. We would love it if you'd say a bunch of nice, positive things in the comments about how you agree with at least me, but you can say nice things about John if you want. That's up to you. That's optional. Uh, we would love to hear your opinions, and, and if you want to share your tier list what you want to see most when it comes to changes into the new season all that good stuff but like i always say this is much more about getting conversation started organizing ideas and helping people to articulate what they think about characters and where the game is at i've had a good time me too yeah it's a get a discussion going that's uh what we love to see in the comments there all right guys well we'll see you next time uh on a on a, another episode of talking block someday someday in the next six months <laughs>